Welcome everybody. This will be a short TEDx because we don't have any time to waste. Just look at the figures on the forest station in the Amazon. By the time you're done watching this video, we will have lost another 25 soccer fields. This session is called Your Money and the Amazon because I believe that money is one of the most powerful forces in the universe together with gravitational attraction and love. But those two are quite complicated affairs and I'm not gonna be able to explain them. So you might have heard before, there are three types of financial transactions. Consumption, that is money that you trade for something like a good or service that you need or want for yourself. Donation, which is money that you trade without expecting anything in return for yourself except maybe for a warm fuzzy feeling. And investment, which is money that you trade in today for the expectation of getting back more money in the future. Well, all three of them are somehow connected to the Amazon. On consumption, reduce, reuse, recycle as much as possible is a mantra. I'm sure that you already avoid products that are manufactured with child labor, and maybe you also um, try to buy goods that are not connected to legal deforestation. But we can go further. We can buy products that generate income for families that maintain the forest, that that is part of their livelihoods. On donations, I am sure that you already have your favorite charities, but consider expanding your portfolio to include organizations working in the Amazon. And please, please, please make all your giving in the form of unrestricted giving. As a founder and CEO of a nonprofit, I can tell you that $1 in unrestricted giving is worth between four and $40 of project funding. I can promise you that you'll get that warm fuzzy feeling as well. Which, by the way, on doing research for this talk, I discovered that, has, that it has a name that is called Kamamuta. Oh, and do you know what else I discovered? That generous people live longer. So don't forget to volunteer and donate blood as well. But what I really want to focus on today is the third type of transaction, investing. Sometimes you don't know what you're investing in, and that's because someone is doing that on your behalf. He or she for the bank might be telling you uh, more or less of what they're doing with your money and that means that you know more or less about what your money is generating in the world. So first uh, order of business is asking those people what is your money uh, invested in. But before talking about investing in the Amazon, I wanted to talk about another concept called impact investing. So remember that uh, we define investing as trading in money now with the expectation of getting back more money in the future. Well, impact investing is defined as uh, trading in money now with the expectation of generating a positive and or uh, positive social and or environmental impact and getting back money in the future. Impact investing is a growing trend with the latest figures adding up to $750 billion globally. The older sister of impact investing is called ESG, that stands for integrating environmental, social, and governance aspects into the analysis of investments. And at the current growth, that is probably a $40 trillion uh, industry today globally. Typically, impact investing will be connected to more proactive, smaller, more private instruments like venture capital and direct lending. And ESG, or responsible investing as it's also known, it's connected to larger and more public instruments like the stock markets or the global debt markets. Of course, that is a generalization. Uh, there, is, uh, there are some overlaps, but that helps to paint a mental, mental picture. But regardless of whether we're talking about impact investing or responsible investing, both strategies are important to fund a group of businesses that foster a sustainable development for the Amazon region, and at the same time to defund another group of businesses that are involved in deforestation or practices that have negative implications to the Amazon. Specifically speaking about impact investing in the Amazon, impact has to do not only with what you, in, you invest in, but also on how you make that investment. We must take into account that Brazil is not for amateurs. Really, that is not a figure of speech. Brazil places 124th, so one, two, four, out of 190 uh, countries in uh, the ease of doing business 
index. And if you think that doing business in the Amazon is significantly harder given the distances and complexities and costs involved, that will probably place the Amazon like 200 out of 190. And the implication is that many ventures that are, uh, that are positive for, for the Amazon are not financially sustainable and they need some type of subsidy or at least temporary subsidy, especially if they want to do well, do good, but also be fully compliant with the law. Because one of the major issues in Brazil in general, and it's even more pronounced in the Amazon, is the rule of law or lack thereof. But that's a whole other session. Sitawi published a study on impact investing in the Amazon, surveying people that are investors and entrepreneurs in the region, but also people who plan to be, plan to invest or to start a venture in the region. We came out with a framework that identified several potential roles or needs for those impact investments to be successful. There's a role for guarantees, uh, patient or concessionary capital. Those are important to attract investors that are not ready yet to take on the risk of investing in the Amazon for a given expected return of a venture or of a financial instrument. Uh, and this is done to protect mostly investors. Uh, as an example, you can think of an uh, international corporation agency that takes on a first loss position or a lower interest rate loan in connection to a, loan, a private loan from uh, say a private equity uh, fund. There's also a role for technical assistance for entrepreneurs. Um, this is important to close capability gaps that might exist and it protects both entrepreneurs and the investors. And you can think of this as a, uh, an example of this as an acceleration program that has finance management, accounting, operations, strategy, tracks. Uh, there's also a, a role for social responsibility measures uh, for the affected communities because in general, investors are quite diversified. So if uh, the venture goes belly up, uh, the investor suffers very little. The entrepreneur, on the other hand, suffers more. He or she will have invested a few years of their lives in this venture, uh, but they can always do something else afterwards. But the community that you're investing in, it stays there. It will, it will remain there. So we have to make sure that they are better off after the investment, regardless of whether it is a high return uh, or lower return investment for the investor or the entrepreneur. And by the way, that is the whole reason we're talking about such investments, because we want them to remain there. We want them to have dignified lives because they're the, one, they're the ones who are protecting the forest. At Sitawi, we managed, for example, a project in the Middle Juruá territory that includes energy, education, biodiversity, protection in connection to supply chain activities. There's also a role for a purchaser of the goods that are being produced by that venture and who is committed to buying all uh, or a great deal of the volume that's supplied for several years. And that makes a lot of difference in terms of the chances of success of the venture. In the study, we call them committed off-takers. Think of Natura, the cosmetic company, uh, committing to buy today all the oils produced by a given seed uh, for the next 10 years. Something that we had not put in the report but became uh, fairly obvious afterwards is that there's also a role for um, companies or, in, or foundations interested in purchasing the social or environmental outcomes of the venture, uh, something that can increase the returns of the investment. Uh, think of it as someone buying verified carbon credits that are generated from uh, regenerating pasture into forest as part of an operation of a, a, an invested company. It, it sounds complicated, I know. Uh, there are a lot of people pretending uh, to do impact investing, and in that case, it's not that complicated. But if you want to do it right, it is. And that is one of the reasons why impact investing has historically been done mostly by uh, wealthy families, individuals, uh, wealthy individuals, and foundations. 
uh, the complexity makes more sense if you have a lot of money to invest. But we didn't want to limit the discussion to a small group of people because we believe that the more people caring for the Amazon, the better. So after publishing that study, uh, we created something to make your life easier. You as in a person that on top of consuming responsibly, donating generously, are also interested in investing $200 in the Amazon, but you might not have $200,000 for that. So we created a crowd lending platform. We took our track record as the most active impact investor in Brazil with over 50 transactions performed. We evaluated dozen, uh, dozens of organizations in the Amazon and ended up selecting five of those to be invested by people just like yourself. In this case, it was, it was restricted to people that live in Brazil for regulatory reasons, but they could lend um, from 1,000 reais, which is the $200 I mentioned before, and upwards to companies producing natural juices from local fruits or installing solar, solar panels in riverbank quilombola communities or um, producing fine chocolate, selling indigenous arts and crafts, or a co-op that gathers uh, leaves and seeds and helps with reforestation efforts in the region. And remember that I said that sometimes there's someone investing in your behalf, not in the platform. And the platform, you're in control. So you select the company you want to invest in, the one that is most aligned to your values, uh, the one you want your money to nourish. And with that, the reality you want to create or help create in the region. We raised over a million reais directly through the platform and completed the funding round in less than 24 hours. But not to worry, we'll have another Amazon round in the platform in the next year. But I also have to tell you that this was right before the pandemic hit. And uh, after that, we have, we have had to provide additional support to the organizations. So far, so good, but there's still a road ahead. Of course, there are a lot of partners in this endeavor. I don't buy the self-made man fallacy. If, it was, if the expression was self-made woman, maybe, but definitely not self-made man. The platform itself is an example of blended finance. It requires uh, philanthropic capital. It generates opportunity for people to invest at market rate or close to market rate uh, returns and provides technical assistance to the entrepreneurs for two years, uh, which is uh, about the length of the loan. As a side note, I'm personally engaged both as an investor, because I put money in uh, all those companies, but also as a consumer uh, with the chocolate company. The chocolates are just divine. But there's a lot more that uh, can and must be done to protect the Amazon. This is just the tip of the iceberg, or better yet, one of the branches of the tree. Speaking about trees, I wanted to close this session with a new version of an old saying. If a tree burns down in the Amazon and we're not there to see it, is the smoke real? You bet it is, and we should use all types of money to help solve the problem.